Hi, I'm Krista Brady, and today I'll be talking to you about neurons and upper extremity nerves. Neurons are the functional unit of the nervous system. They are the cells that carry nerve impulses to communicate between different parts of the body. Here we have a model of a multipolar neuron, which is one of the more common structural types of neurons. Here we have the cell body of the neuron, also called the soma, or sometimes the perikaryon, which is an older term for it. Within the cell body, we can see several organelles. This large circular structure is the nucleus, which holds the genetic material of the neuron. And then surrounding it, we have all this uh, material that's red in this particular model. In real life, this substance would be gray, and it's actually what gives the gray coloration to gray matter in your nervous system. This was originally called nissel substance or nissel bodies, and then it was discovered that this is rough endoplasmic reticulum or rough ER, and you hopefully remember from your Bio 156 class that rough ER makes proteins. So neurons being very active cells, they make a lot of proteins, and so they have a lot of rough ER. Uh, you can also see these extensions coming off of the cell body or soma. These ones up here, these branch-like structures are dendrites. These are extensions that are specialized to receive incoming nerve impulses from other neurons. Then we have this one long extension here. This is the axon, which typically will carry nerve impulses away from the cell body to, uh, to the next cell. A couple of things about this axon. So this part here where the cell body narrows into the axon, this is actually called the axon hillock. Hillock meaning a small hill. So notice how that looks kind of like a, a hill as it's narrowing down into that axon. This is where all of the nerve impulses that the, um, that the neuron received from other uh, cells, other neurons, um, they're going to be summed up here to determine whether or not this neuron will fire an action potential. That action potential, if it gets fired, will travel down the axon all the way to reach the next cell. Um, and so at the end of the axon, we may have these branches called telodendria, or a single one is a telodendrion. And then we have all the way at the end, we have the axon terminals, which are uh, swellings at the end of the axon that hold neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitters are the chemicals that neurons use to communicate with other cells. In this case, we've got a skeletal muscle that this neuron is communicating with here. A couple of other things you'll notice about the axon are this cell here. This is a Schwann cell that is creating the myelin sheath, which is the yellow um, material on this model. The myelin sheath is a fatty substance that protects and electrically insulates the axon to help speed up the conduction of nerve impulses. Between one Schwann cell and the next, we have a little gap called the node of Ranvier. So that little gap is important in the conduction of nerve impulses. Surrounding this entire thing, we have this green substance which is representing loose connective tissue called endoneurium. Endoneurium surrounds an individual axon. Axons typically don't travel alone. They will travel together with other axons. So around a small bundle of axons, we will have a perineurium, another connective tissue sheath, and then surrounding an entire nerve, which is a large bundle of axons in the peripheral nervous system. Around that entire nerve, we will have the epineurium. Now let's talk about the nerve plexuses and um, some of the spinal nerves. Nerve plexuses are braids of nerves as they come off of the spinal cord. And the spinal nerves actually will weave together into these plexuses at certain points. And this creates redundancy in the nerves that emerge from them because they're receiving axons from multiple levels of the spinal cord. So if one level is damaged, then we might still have axons from other levels that are still able to function. Up here at the top, we have the cervical plexus, which takes axons from levels C1 to C4 of the spinal cord, sometimes a little bit from C5. 
And the most important nerve that comes off of the cervical plexus is the phrenic nerve. We don't see it on this diagram because we are looking at the posterior, but the phrenic nerve will come straight down and innervate the diaphragm, which is that large muscle that helps you to breathe. Right below the cervical plexus, we have the brachial plexus, which comes from levels C5 to C8 and T1 of the spinal cord. And the brachial plexus will serve the upper extremity. Um, so we have several important nerves that come off of the brachial plexus. Uh, first, you'll probably notice this one wrapping around the posterior side of the humerus. This is the axillary nerve, and it innervates deltoid and teres minor. Then we have another one that's coming down along the posterior of the arm here for the most part. It will innervate triceps brachii, that large muscle on the back of your arm, as well as all of the extensor muscles of your forearm and brachioradialis. So the radial nerve is a very large nerve that can do many things in your upper extremity. On the anterior side, which you can see represented by the dotted lines on this, um, on this poster, we have the median nerve, which will come down the uh, middle of the arm and forearm. And the median nerve will innervate pronator teres and palmaris longus and flexor carpi radialis. Um, the ulnar nerve comes down along the medial side of the arm and forearm here, and it innervates flexor carpi ulnaris. And then we have the musculocutaneous nerve, which will come um, along the lateral side of the anterior forearm, and it innervates biceps brachii and brachialis. I didn't mention some of the other uh, muscles that are innervated by the radial nerve. The radial nerve innervates triceps brachii, that large muscle on the posterior arm, as well as all of the extensor muscles of the posterior forearm, and brachioradialis. Those are the major spinal nerves of the upper extremity. And then let's move a little farther down. So now you see all of these nerves coming off of the thoracic region of the spinal cord here. These are the intercostal nerves. The intercostal nerves will innervate the external and internal intercostal muscles as well as the abdominal muscles, rectus abdominis, uh, the internal and external abdominal obliques, and transversus abdominis. Then we move a little farther down, and we notice this next big mess of nerves. This is another plexus. This is the lumbar plexus, the lumbar plexus. And we'll talk in the next unit about what nerves come off of that one. And then below that, we have this large sacral plexus. And again, we will cover the nerves that come off of the sacral plexus in the next unit. This is the thin man chart, and I'll show you some of the nerve plexuses and nerves on this chart. So on this chart, we can see the cervical plexus a little bit up here, and then we can see the brachial plexus below that. That's this whole big mess of nerves right here. Coming off of the brachial plexus, we can see the axillary nerve wrapping around the posterior side of the humerus and then going up to innervate the deltoid and teres minor. And then we can also see the radial nerve coming down. We've got several branches of the radial nerve coming down along the posterior side of the uh, upper extremity here. One other nerve we can see pretty clearly on this chart is the ulnar nerve. So notice how it comes along the medial side of the arm here and then it wraps right behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And then it will uh, travel to the anterior side of the forearm to innervate flexor carpi ulnaris. We can also see the intercostal nerves pretty well on this chart. Again, those intercostal nerves will innervate the external and internal intercostal muscles, as well as the abdominal muscles like rectus abdominis, the internal and external abdominal obliques, and transversus abdominis. Then we can see a little bit of the lumbar plexus here, and then we can see uh, the sacral plexus pretty clearly right down here. Those are the best things we can see on this chart for our upper extremity nerves and for the, the plexuses. 
In this video, I've talked to you about neurons and their parts, as well as the nerve plexuses and the major nerves of the upper extremity. Now, go ahead and practice these using the labeled and unlabeled images in the Learning Lab PowerPoint, and then you can apply these on the lab quizzes.